Welcome to IDB everyone, it is Andrew here. iOS 11 is out and it brings so many features. In fact, we covered over 230 of them, but there are a lot of iPad specific ones and we're gonna go through those today, starting with the all new macOS inspired dock. You can now fit more icons than ever into the new dock simply by dragging and dropping them in. In fact, you can fit over 15 of them. There's 15 of your choice and then one that you cannot replace, which is there on that far right hand side. That's been kind of a predictive one that has a few other cool aspects as well. As you can see, as more and more icons go in, the docks just become smaller and smaller. As you remove them, the size gets bigger. Now on that right hand side, we mentioned there was kind of a predictive icon and there's actually three of them and it can go up to three depending on how many icons you have in the dock. If you remove some of these, you can actually see three icons instead and they'll do all sorts of things. They'll populate based on the time of day if you always check your email in the morning or maybe by location whenever you get to the office, you pull up Slack or handoff or continuity if you have something like Bear opened up on your Mac. I don't want to oversell it, but this might be one of my favorite features of all time. It's absolutely awesome. But the changes with the dock don't stop there. You can now access the dock literally from everywhere. So even if I'm in my favorite application, if I'm in Bear editing a document, I can swipe up from the bottom and access the dock. I can tap and hold and drag a new app out of my dock and pull it right onto my screen for a slide over. I can slide that app to the left or to the right, whatever works for me. I can flick down from the top and put it into a split view, flick again to take it out. Yes, there are a lot of gestures and it takes a little bit of time to get used to. There's a little flick to go in and out of split view. And of course you're not stuck with just that one quarter view. You can go half or three fourths, whatever percentage you want to do. Whenever you're done, just flick it right back off the screen to hide it. It's really handy because you can be reading something in Safari, pull over, type a text message and slide that right away. Really easy to get into stuff like messages, Twitter, or mail while you're working on something and then hide it again. We also have the brand new app switcher. Simply swipe up all the way from the bottom and keep going and you'll go right into this new app switcher view, which has all of your apps in a grid format, the dock along the bottom and the all new control center. To force quit apps, you simply flick them up into the air. You can do not just a one at a time, but you can do multiple at a time as well. So if you for some reason need to quit many apps at once, Again, we don't really recommend quitting your background apps because it really doesn't do anything. But if you do need to close multiple, you definitely can. Now, if you are working in documents that have files, like whether a photo editor or pages or numbers, you can actually now hold onto those icons and have recent files show up. It's kind of like a mini widget view that you would see over on the iPhone. It works on many of Apple stock applications like files, pages, numbers, and Keynote, all of those, but it will come to more third-party applications in the future as those developers implement support for it. It's really, really handy. I can just see holding on a Fendi photo and choosing one of my recent cover photos instead of having to open it up and choose and do all that stuff. Now, iOS 11 brings that drag and drop feature that we've seen a little bit, like pulling an app up into split view, but it can do a whole lot more. So I can pull up that dock. I can again drag a dock or drag an icon app from my dock and I can go ahead and swap out one of my apps that are in split view. Really handy because then you don't have to close and do all these weird things. Close it first, open a new one. So just drag and drop on top of it and replace it. You can even do it from the home screen. My arms get a little wonky trying to keep it in front of the camera, but again, I can hold on to Safari, open up an app while still holding that icon and replace one of my active split view applications. Looking more into drag and drop, it's not just all about app icons. Really, just like it is on your computer, it's more about accessing files and moving those around. So, say I'm working on an upcoming really cool article and I need to get some photos that I've saved inside of my iCloud Drive. I can go ahead and put the iPad or the Files app in the split view, drag and drop an image right out of my Affinity Photo folder into my bare document. So it works between applications in split view. It'll also work within one application, like moving stuff around. So whether I want to move this photo to a new folder or drag it into one of the tag sizes. So I want to add a gray tag and a blue tag to this photo of my dog really easy to do. And one of my favorite things is all these don't work just in one application or in split view. I can hold onto this picture here, hold it. And because we have multi-touch, I can go ahead and pinch back to the home screen, scroll around a little bit, open up bear again and drag and drop it this way. I can do that from Safari, from wherever, just drag that icon around or that image or that file and move it to places that you need it to go. 
the QuickType keyboard got a lot of improvements. We saw that on the iOS side things in general, like on the iPhone, but on the iPad, we have this cool little feature where you can actually pull down to access the secondary feature. It arguably works better on this smaller iPad because you do have more keys that can be put as a secondary character, but it is still useful on the largest iPad Pro because you have those excess keys behind the number keys up top. So simply a little flick down to access those secondary characters. The Apple Pencil also got supercharged. You can now just tap on your lock screen. Literally, your iPad is still locked. Just tap it and instant note. It automatically will create a new note. But if you jump into settings, go to notes, and go to these advanced options, you actually have a few other cool things that you can do. By default, it will create a new note, but you can turn it off if you want to. You can resume the last note you created from your lock screen or resume the last note viewed in the notes app. So with the last one viewed, or the last note you created. And of course there are time limits on those, like maybe you only wanna do that within the last 15 minutes, hour, whatever it may be. There's also a lot of improvements to markup. So say we have a PDF here. What would you wanna to do to PDF? You could sign it, you could annotate it. So if we have this here, I wanna go ahead and make some little marks on here on stuff that needs changed before we send it off to editorial. Perfect, go ahead, that looks good, that looks good. And then you can go ahead and really quickly, easily send it. But it works even better inside of applications, like in mail. Say they made some changes to this PDF and they need me to sign off on it. I get this email in, I can tap on that PDF, tap on annotate and I have instant markup. I can go through, check mark everything looks good, sign it at the bottom and then tap on done. When it has done, I can reply to everyone, start a new message or delete it completely. It's perfect, they can send you a document, you can sign the document, hit done and immediately reply back to everyone or send a new email completely. The instant markup also works on screenshots, another of my favorite features. Simply taking a screenshot adds a little pop-up in that bottom left-hand corner, and then you can immediately tap on it and use your Apple Pencil to annotate all over it. I can give this big squiggle and an A+, I can delete it or save it and send it on its way. There is also inline markup, which is really cool in notes. As you're taking notes, it's not always typing, it's not always drawing, it can be a combination. Now you can draw a whole bunch, as you can see by my expert squiggle, then type a bunch with my completely coherent sentences, go ahead and draw again, and you can literally have different sections in your notes of text, then typing, then drawing, whatever it may be, you can alternate between them all. iOS 11 is a fantastic update that brings many, many new features, but it is especially useful on the iPad and iPad Pro. Multitasking finally feels really powerful on Apple's tablet. Unfortunately, it still takes a little bit of a learning curve to get there. There are a lot of new gestures and twists and moves that you have to understand to be able to get everything to work. Lots of flicks and pulls from different corners. It can be a little bit overwhelming. We hope we made it a little bit more simple in this video. Check out our full video on everything new in iOS 11 and stay tuned for even more. Please go ahead and click on that big red subscribe button. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. Until next time, it's Andrew for IDB.